sometimes you work hard to beat a video game only to see its ending and go, wait, what? Only to find out there's apparently another ending in the game that makes you go, no. This is why today we're diving into seven of the most unbelievable alternate endings in video games. Brought to you by Privacy.com, a safer way to buy online using virtual payment cards. Use Privacy.com slash odd header down below to save $5 off your first purchase. Wanted. Weapons of Fate. Wanted Weapons of Fate is a third-person shooter based on the 2008 Angelina Jolie action film Wanted, with unfortunately no Angelina. As the protagonist Wesley lives a new life in a fraternity of bullet-curving assassins, the game pretty closely follows the movie's action tone with cover-based combat, though a certain ending makes quite a departure from anything that's in the movie. In all console releases of Weapons of Fate, the game ends rather expectedly with Wesley hunting down the game's antagonist, a man with a deformed face known as the Immortal, and shoots him square in the face. Simple enough, however, for some reason the PC version of the game, which is nearly identical in every other way, features some unexpected changes in the final scene. One change that kind of makes sense is the final scene now features the signature bullet curving gimmick that the movie was well recognized for, as the bullet's trajectory curves right past the immortal's face, barely missing him. And in a change that makes a lot less sense, Wesley whips out a different kind of pistol and gives the immortal a golden shower. Okay then, what a great reward for beating this game. Drawn to Life, the next chapter. Drawn to Life is a bright and cherry platformer series that was fairly popular with children in the late 2000s, where the player could draw their own hero in any object of their mind's desire that could be used throughout the game to save the hero's village. After the player completes the final mission of Drawn to Life, the next chapter, where the unnamed hero saves the village from being destroyed, the game abruptly shifts focus to a random non-essential character named Mike, who in a completely left field twist is revealed to have fallen from a tree in our world and dreamed up all the events of the first two games in the few minutes that he was knocked out on the ground, before his parents come and check on their uncoordinated son. And as if that twist already didn't feel entirely unnecessary, other players were treated to a much more unfit and darker ending due to the fact that the game was actually censored with a patch that removed it. As in the original ending that could only be found in the game's earliest copies, the completely ridiculous twist remained essentially the same with the whole game being in Mike's head, but it was portrayed in a much more unsettling and creepy realistic manner that really doesn't fit the tone of the game. Where Mike is driving home with his family from a carnival and suddenly they get into a car accident, his parents then die from the collision leading Mike in a coma of all the events from the first two games again taking place in his head. I can only guess whoever was responsible for this nightmare fuel of insanity must have really hated kids, because many across the internet have claimed the scene traumatized them for years. While the alternate ending does try to rectify some of the nonsense with a cheerier execution, I still can't draw to life any conclusions how the hell any of this was supposed to make any sense. Monster Rancher DS Thanks to Klamonks8 for submitting this through a comment in one of my previous videos. Monster Rancher is a popular RPG slash life simulator largely for younger audiences that's been primarily compared to Pokemon, although it's typically closer to being a virtual pet simulator than an RPG. Normally Monster Rancher on the DS ends pretty expectedly, with you defeating the final battle and your apprentice Cleo exclaiming that she wants to get nonstop cake and cookies as a celebration. However, it was discovered this wasn't the only ending in the game as another ending exists if the player were to defeat all the Zodiac monsters in the game. A task so time-consumingly difficult to do that this ending didn't really come to the attention of the Monster Rancher community until the last Tochicon found it years after the game's release on the Monster Rancher Discord. Because of the rarity of getting this ending, I only have this footage of the ending from King of Heart 34. In the ending, two random non-player characters show up unexpectedly, Colt and Holly, who were both characters in the Monster Rancher anime for kids. Cleo is confused by their appearance, and they say that they rounded everybody up to celebrate after hearing you defeated all of the Zodiac monsters. The mood quickly changes and another character says, I want to find out more about you tonight. What makes you tick? Cleo becomes confused by all of the girls showing up and reasonably asks, what do you mean tonight? Another character chimes in, whoa, a bunch of girls. Then another character shows up and says, what can I say, you've outdone me. Maybe I'll have to make beating you my next priority. Not sure she means what I think she does. Cleo confesses jealousy for you receiving all the attention even though she helped you through the whole adventure. The girls invite you to get going, but Cleo makes a final attempt to convince you to go home instead. You're not going to tag along with them, are you? One character tells Cleo to get some sleep. And then based on the sound effects, I think maybe she slaps Cleo or something? Or maybe Cleo just collapses. The game then fades to black playing some clear sleepy time music. When the game resumes, Holly exclaims, Last night was so much fun. 
It sure was. That's the first time I've ever done that. This is actually happening. This character continues to exude jealousy. Cleo asks you exactly what you were doing last night. And the girls giggle. Cleo then tells you no sucker for a month. And Holly tells you no problem. She'll just slip you hers. What in the hell were they thinking with this one? I can only assume whoever scripted this scene figured no one was ever going to get this far to ever see this sh Unless the whole town losing their virginity to a single rancher was supposed to be canyon in a kid's game. Fake. Before the Pierre Molyneux fable, there was the 1996 fable, strongly in the vein of King's Quest that follows the protagonist Quickthorpe on a quest to save his village by finding and destroying magical gemstones guarded by demons. Unfortunately, despite its above average visuals for the time, fable ended up being a directionless mess, with seemingly no idea where to go after its basic premise. Most notably, after Quickthorpe defeats the final demon in the game, he unlocks a door that randomly leads him to a completely out of place room of unexplained future tech. An inexplicable machine comes down and does something to quick for, making him appear powerful. When completely out of the blue, the game suddenly switches to an eerily bad 3D animation, with an equally creepy narration explaining that Quicklord had actually been in jail the whole time for murdering his family, or as the narrator puts it, merged them with a mackerel. I still can't figure out how you ever managed to merge your entire family with a frozen mackerel at the age of three as apparently the whole game was only in his head while he was waiting to be put to death. Oh, and there's cake. The rest of the prisoners have all chipped in for your cake. Triple layer chunky chocolate maggot. With maggots in it. Frankly, it's one of the most ludicrous endings ever pulled out of someone's ass, which clearly explains why this ending only ever existed in the early copies of the game, as the ending received massive backlash that had the publisher convince the developers to change it for new distribution. In the new ending, after being electrified by the machine, energy flows through the technology and somehow kills the antagonist character from earlier in the game. Instantly after that, Quick Warp goes home and his girlfriend. Well, that's at least a better payoff than finding out that your hero was a serial killer on death row the whole time. That's quite possibly up there as one of the worst endings of all time. Moon Remix RPG Adventure Moon Remix RPG Adventure is a 1997 PS1 title that released in the US for the first time in 2020 for the Nintendo Switch as Moon, finally bringing to America the influential anti-RPG designed by X Squaresoft developers and inspired games like Undertale. In the game, you play as a boy with a new RPG called Moon, where he plays a stereotypical hero on a quest to slay a dragon. His mother tells him to stop playing and get his ass in bed, only for his ass to end up pulled into the television into the world of the game. An old woman named Bramby believes you to be her lost grandson and provides you with his old clothes. Shortly after leading you to find out that the hero of the game has become an unstoppable force ravishing destruction on the environment. At the end of the game, you end up on the moon with all of the world's creatures, where the hero comes to slay them all. The game presents a door on screen and states that when you see a door before your eyes to open the door with your love itself. Unable to open the door, the hero kills the boy. Your mother then asks you again to stop playing the game and the game asks if you want to keep playing. If you say yes, the game's over. If you say no, the creatures are rescued and brought into the real world, meaning you have to stop playing the game to win. The game is so anti-RPG it literally wants you to stop playing them. While this ending is cool in a lot of ways, it ends up feeling painfully anticlimactic, ultimately leaving lots of unanswered questions such as the fact that it literally cut off the end of the hero's story, and we never even got to see the damn dragon or find out what was going on with Randy's grandson. All loose ends tie up in a strange, unused ending that can be found in the date of the game, accessible through the use of the game shark with the original PlayStation version. In the original ending, the player finds a dragon in an unfinished environment, who tells the player he will be slain by the hero shortly thereafter which happens pretty promptly. After this, the player finds themselves in a void where they find a naked boy. Taking the boy back to Granby, she recognizes the naked lad as her missing grandson. The boy explains that he had a dream where he killed endless monsters, and Granby tells him that was no dream and he must atone for his actions and die. Holy sh**, Grandma. The boy is taken to where the dragon was slain and begins healing wounded and bleeding characters that were cut from the game. Through the healing process, this somehow transforms the boy into the dragon. The dragon then says that the loop will never end, with the hero coming to slay him who will then become the boy again and then again become the dragon, repeating the same cycle over and over, and then says it's time for you to open your door. 
Despite it being an insanely darker ending and the most depressing moment in the whole game, it's a bit more of a meaningful ending, leaving the game in a fruitless, endless state that can only be broken by literally turning off the game. A more subtle take on the final ending, except the whole what the f**k of escorting a naked boy to get sentenced to death by his own grandmother. You can only guess why they didn't use this ending. Custom Robo Custom Robo was the first game in the popular Japanese series that was released outside of Japan on the Nintendo GameCube in 2004, where players in an RPG adventure could build and send highly customizable robots into battle. However, instead of entering the battlefield, you can profusely refuse to partake at all. In the last chapter of the game, the police chief informs the police squad that they'll need to break into the Z's Syndicate. The group all agrees to go and asks the player if they'd like to join if they agree the game proceeds as normal. But by saying no a total of 19 times when Harry asks the player to join the mission. Well, we're not gonna force you. Are you sure you're not coming? I'm not going. The human race is in danger and you're too scared to help? I'm not going. You're a coward, is that what you're saying? You're really not coming? I'm not going. I'll introduce you to a cute girl. Come on, let's go. I'm not going. Come on, give us a break. Pick that other option, it's really easy. I'm not going. The human race is in danger, man. I'm not going. The rest of the police squad will take off without them. Before the game cuts to an empty screen with a message informing the player that the town was reduced to rubble, that the police squad died in the mission, the human race was exterminated, and that all of this could have been avoided the player character had just gone on the mission. See? I told you you should have come with us! Thanks to you, the whole human race was wiped out and I died. Next time, think a little more carefully before you go picking the wrong answer. Got it? The Walking Dead Many times we've covered something on the channel that was found in a game that can only be assumed to be created by a developer who was slowly losing their mind. Well, players who were disappointed by the depressing ending of 2012's The Walking Dead Season 1 may be surprised to find out there was actually an alternate ending that appears to have been created for the same reason, which developer Jake Rodkin shared on Twitter in 2018, six years after the game's release. Rodkin explained that during the final days of the game's development, only he and developer Sean Ainsworth were left in the office to fix any last-minute bugs, and that's when Ainsworth decided to create this much more satisfying ending for Season 1 where Lee Everett, after being bitten, busts his ass off this structure and fully goes to town in a badass recreation of the Matrix Revolution's final epic fight. Everett then punches the zombie's head straight off and manages to get it to land on his head. As you likely predicted, Everett begins frolicking happily through the zombie horde as Gorillaz 5-4 plays in the background. Everett does another Matrix-inspired move as he flips through the air and lands on the hood of this car, as it flips epically in slow motion behind him. At this point, the scene slowly builds towards Everett doing the most logical thing in this moment that anybody could possibly think of doing. Now that's how you end a game. And end this video. And if you're looking for a great way to end a free subscription without it charging you for the next month, I highly recommend checking out privacy.com. Privacy.com sets you up with virtual payment cards that match your regular card information, keeping your identity safe online and transactions secure. Privacy.com keeps your information private and safe, and even lets you make as many virtual cards as you want. You can tell Privacy.com that you only want to use this card for a certain store, and then set the spending limit on the card, and you can even make it single use so that you won't ever get billed for a paid subscription ever again. It even has a browser extension for Chrome making it easier to create new virtual cards every time you make a purchase. Upgrade to a pro plan for $10 a month and get 1% cash back on all of your purchases. Sign up today at privacy.com slash oddheader for $5 off your first purchase, which I used to buy a 10-pack of Pepsi on Amazon. I'm usually more of a Coke guy, but that wasn't $5. Start making smarter and more secure purchases today and go to privacy.com slash oddheader and get $5 off your first purchase. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe. And if you know of any other alternate endings and video games that you'd like to see me cover, submit to oddheader.com, come join the Discord, or even give me a shout on Twitter or Reddit. And thanks again everybody for being patient with me as I moved across the country. I'm officially all moved in and just now getting settled, so expect a lot more things to come on the channel here soon. Shout out to Ash Photography, Bro Ups, Combat 15 Bowl, Dear Mid Crowley, Ed Moffat, Eddie Toxpin, Fox M Cloud 123, Hugh Janus, Ray Spare, Riley S, Scarities, Scout with a Name, Sneaking J, Taryn Stock, Towerizer, Jan Benier, and Xantharis for their Patreon support. Stay tuned.